Welcome to another episode of Racing to Learn. We are a nonprofit that uses radio control to get kids excited about math and science. Today we're back in the workshop working on our ECX Ruckus two wheel drive. Um, got some upgrades here. You can see we did one side of the suspension already. Uh, we just put in the, the ECX aluminum shock replacements here. These are a lot better than the stock ones. Um, I don't know if you guys can hear that or not, but basically one of these the things about the stock ones is that they leak oil fairly easily just due to their design. So you can see uh, the shock body is a little bit dirty because the oil has been seeping out. Uh, we did a, uh, a refreshing of the, the aluminum shocks that we had already. Uh, basically just dumped out the fluid, cleaned them out, put in new fluid. Another thing that we did here was um, we switched the screw, uh, actually the the um, the shock end here, the rod end from the stock kind of plastic end with, um, you know, there's there's a little gray plastic insert that can rotate there. Let me get the camera to focus. Uh, we replaced it with uh, just the rod ends off of a Traxxas. Now these have metal pivots, which is a little bit nicer, um, not necessarily sturdier. We, we, haven't, we haven't had a stock rod and brake on us, but we had them laying around. So we thought, hey, it might be a good experiment to try on the, the metal rod ends to, um, you know, to remove uh, some binding in the transmission, uh, in, in the uh, suspension here. Uh, we're running the RPM A arms on this, and um, basically the the stock is a or the shock is a stock drop in. Uh, one thing to note here, we we were going to switch over to the lowest suspension hole just to give it some more suspension um, travel, right? But uh, the shock will only work uh, on the middle one or the outer one. Just uh, actually didn't even try the outer one, but the middle one is where it is. That's where we put it back in, just because. Um, if you try to put it on that first one, the the shock cap actually gets in the way of the shock tower, so you can't do that. Um, to replace the shocks, you're, the easiest way is to get a angled screwdriver like this if you have one, uh, or else you're going to have to pull out probably your receiver or maybe even the servo saver, or you, know, you can get some sort of twisting extension on a screwdriver just to get at the screw here. All right, so we've got the angled screwdriver, and just gotta get it to engage there on the back of the screw. Um, you'll probably also have to remove the shock tower, and because it will likely get in the way here of the nut driver. Uh, actually, yeah, you could flex it a bit. Uh, it's still blocking it. Yeah, so it's just easier to get um, this bumper around this bumper with um, I forgot what is this a uh, two millimeter hex driver, and we had to uh, just put these up on the highest possible setting here to test fit. Our proline body. We'll go ahead and pop this back off. Fits nicely through the Torment bumper, whereas the Ruckus bumper actually blocked the um, access to the hex heads there. All right, so let's give this another shot. Go ahead and get the screwdriver in the back. And we can work off the hexes here. Or the, the nut, not the hex. All right. Now, one thing that we encountered while um, 
putting in the longer screw or to go through that um, that Traxxas style metal rod end um, is that you know we also switched from a fine threaded uh, screw to a or from a coarse headed self tapping type screw um, to a fine headed one and originally we wanted to go with the inner mounting hole for uh, in the RPM arm just to give it some more travel but um, getting the screw started in that hole the inner hole proved difficult uh, annoyingly difficult probably because we were doing it at night too <laughs> um, so we just ended up using the outer hole uh, since that was already tapped by the um, the self-tapping screw, coarse thread screw that was being used before. All right, so the old shock is now removed. We'll just keep it together with this coarse threaded screw, just in case we ever want to reuse that. Um, so we ended up going with a longer, fine, threaded and I'll show you guys the difference here in case you don't know so you look at those two screws in comparison and you'll see a coarse thread versus a fine thread so um, the, the fine threads are beneficial because those coarse threaded screws can sometimes work themselves loose over time even in plastic Whereas the fine threaded screws usually won't come out of plastic unless that plastic has been stripped. All right, so we're just gonna take the stock screw, put it through the shock eyelet. And um, you'll notice that, let me put it through this way. You'll notice that um, the Traxxas rod ends have, one side is bigger than the other here, or flatter. See that flat spot there? All right, there we go. Let's get the camera to focus. So uh, we're just gonna put that one uh, against the A-arm, the, the, the bigger spot there. Um, probably doesn't matter a huge bunch either way, but that's just the convention that we're gonna follow. Um, the rationale here is that it just gives you a little more surface area against that soft plastic. Just spreading out the pressure against the soft plastic. Um, Alright, so we're going to get our screwdriver, hold it in, in the back of the screw. Or hold the screw in from the back. And just tighten it. Now these... Um, these go into pivot balls in those shock caps, so you don't want to tighten too much or else um, it will not have the necessary degrees of movement that you would want. So let me show you what I mean. So this, yeah, see how I can wiggle it back and forth a little bit? You want that pivot ball to be performing its, its uh, it's action there, and I think I tightened it way too much on the other side, so I'm going to loosen that a little bit. Alright, here we go here. There we go. So you do want some wiggle in those, because there is a plastic pivot ball in those caps to provide this, to prevent the suspension from binding. So. You do want to have that wiggle. Now we had to switch over to a longer uh, fine threaded screw because the because of the thickness of that metal pivot ball here on the Traxxas rod ends is is thicker than stock. So um, if you compare the lengths here, I'm not sure exactly what the the stock measurement uh, is on that coarse threaded screw here, but that's the stock one and that's the longer one that we're going to need with the, the Traxxas metal pivot ball. Um, I can measure that real quick. So this is how you measure a screw for these button 
top screws or round top screws, all right, you just want to measure the threaded area. So this is a 15 inch, or sorry, 15 millimeter. Let me just turn that back here. So you just want to measure the threads on it. All right, so 15 millimeters. I don't know if you guys can see it on the camera here. Let me get it to focus. And the stock one, that looks like a 10 millimeter. So, all right, so let's get this screw in. It's just gonna pop it through the, the rear, uh, to the back of the pivot ball here. And then we're gonna use the lower screw hole. You might find it useful just to prop the, the RC up like this on the bumper and the line of the screw with the hole and so we were just having a real difficulty last night doing this um, and you might want to just lean it against something as well lean the RC that is because the the con or the the difficulty with these fine threaded screws is that they are a little bit more difficult to get started into that into a plastic, especially if these RPM arms were made for the uh, coarse thread itself tapping and I'm even having a difficulty here and also these uh, can be a bit of a pain let me see maybe I'll do uh, just rest this up against my shoulder here Okay, got that threaded in, and it's sitting real nice there. So, these are noticeably smoother than the stock plastic shocks. Big improvement there. So, this is pretty much ready to go. We're just going to... Where was that screw? Oh, here we go. Just putting the round screw, second one back into the front bumper here. And uh, we'll go, go ahead and put the receiver box back on. I just wanted to show you all how to put in these, these upgraded shocks into the Ruckus slash Torment. And then using these the upgraded RPM A arms. Another couple upgrades you can notice on this particular ruckus. So this was a nice surprise. Again, we bought this ruckus off of eBay. Um, so a couple things they didn't notice that there were aluminum hexes all the way around. That's always nice. Uh, no plastic ones to round off here. And then also tracks as turnbuckles. Um, so these are adjustable turnbuckles versus the plastic links that come stock. So you can adjust the toe in, toe out of those, those tires. So let us know what you guys think. We'll get the, the wheels back on this here, the receiver cap back on and put this truck through its paces. Uh, again, uh, with the upgraded front shocks, we'll probably do the rear shocks. 
Um, another thing we wanted to do was just um, open up the the, uh, the gearbox, make sure everything was um, you know was lubed up okay. Um, perhaps put some grease um, into the the differential there. So stay tuned. Let us know what you guys think. Please like, comment, subscribe, and we'll catch you next time.